Jenny Beckoff effect, tennis racket theorem, moments of inertia. Many years ago, I saw this video and I looked at that and I was pretty much fascinated by it. But one of the thoughts I had is, will it just keep doing that forever if you left it alone? Some of you already know the answer to that, but I had to go and create a model for myself to test that out. So here it is. So this is the model. This is the T-handle in a physics engine. And I'm going to demonstrate the Jenny Beckhoff effect on this T-handle model. I'm also going to demonstrate the Jenny Beckhoff effect on the moon gravitational model. And I'm also going to demonstrate it using the Earth gravitational model EGM 2008. The EGM 2008 is much better than the EGM 96 that I used in previous videos. So back to the T handle here. So every solid has three principal axes through its center of mass. That's including the moon and the earth. And each of these axes has a corresponding moment of inertia. And the moment of inertia is measured by how difficult it is to rotate the body on that particular axis. So on the left here, I have three columns, X, Y, and Z. And I'm going to rotate this T handle on the X axis first. So P, X. Okay, so let's just count how long that takes to, to turn. One cat and dog, two cat and dog, three cat and dog, four cat and dog, five cat and dog, six cat and dog. So that's roughly six seconds for one revolution on the x-axis. If we look at the column, the x-axis, the first column, is stable. I'm going to call that the minor principal axis. We'll see why. I'm now going to spin that on the z-axis. One cat and dog, two cat and dog. So that's roughly two seconds to spin that. That's much faster. Requires less energy to spin it on the z-axis. And if you look at the columns on the left there, x, y, z, the z-axis is stable. So I'm spinning it on the z-axis. And it's stable. Actually, I'll just show you that if I speed it right up. It's very stable. Let's show you that on the x-axis. x, let's speed it right up. It's very, it's very, very stable. But let's spin it on the y-axis. One cat and dog, two cat and dog, three cat and dog, four cat and dog, five. It's probably about four and a half, about five seconds, I'd say. Five seconds to rotate on the y-axis. I'm going to call that the intermediate axis. So let's look at the numbers again on the y-axis. Everything's relatively stable there. If we leave it for a little bit longer, we'll see that the x and the z begin to destabilize. There we go, X and Z. Now it begins to flip over. That's very good. Now what happens? Does this happen forever? No, it doesn't. Eventually it's going to either stabilize on either the major principal axis or the minor principal axis. So let's test that. I'm going to put that into a spin on the y-axis, give it some random amount of torque for a random amount of time, and it's going to stabilize on either one of those other two axes. So there we go. If you look at the the path that the end of the arm is taking it no longer goes completely vertical up or down it starts to swing sideways and it looks like it's going to stabilize on on one of those on either the x or the z axis there it's going into a flat spin which i'm which i'm calling a flat spin and if we watch we'll watch these numbers on the left here one of those will stabilize. There we go, it's really flat now. It's like it's stabilizing on the X. And there we go. And I'll show you now that it'll also stabilize on the other axis as well.
Okay, it looks like it's actually going to stabilize on the other axis now, which I'm going to call the barrel roll because it looks like it's like it's a barrel spinning on its long end, a little bit off center. Now, when I do these tests, it's always random. I can't really predict it, but I'm sure it's something to do with how much torque was applied for how long on a certain, well, on the Y axis. So we'll just let this go for a bit longer and we'll see that one of those columns there will stabilize. Looks like it's going to be the third column. Okay, so that's been running for quite a while. I've sped up the video so you don't have to actually watch the whole thing. But that's pretty much stabilized now on what I was calling the Z axis, the major principal axis at the beginning of the video. Let's show that again quickly the Z axis takes about two seconds to spin on that axis. On the x-axis, it takes about six seconds to spin. So I'm saying the, I mean, when you send this off on its y-axis, I can't tell you right now whether that's gonna end up on its major principle or minor principle. Just, it just, it will decide itself. Let's apply the same model to the moon. Just to reiterate what you're actually looking at here, this is a the gravity amplified by 100. And this model is called the GRGM 1200A. So if I was to look at that at strength 1, I mean, it looks like a sphere. It's pretty realistic. But what I'm testing is the gravitational model multiplied by 100 so that the instability will happen much faster. Okay, so that's it. It's very dramatic. And that's the side, the bulbous side. That's the side that faces the Earth. That again, that's the side that you see from the Earth. Okay, let's spin that model. Okay, so I'm going to rotate it on the Y axis. And this is the rotation that it's following now. And just imagine the Earth is sort of at the end of this yellow thing, this line here, but you know, hundreds of thousands of kilometers further out. If I use this moon gravitational model, and speed it up on the y-axis, it's actually very stable. Watch. It doesn't actually lose the stability. So the moon is already stable if you were to apply the Jenny Bekov effect to it. Let's check that out on the z-axis. There we go, spinning over like that. That's relatively stable as well. I'm speeding it up significantly. So the moon could actually spin on that axis as it goes around the Earth and it would still be stable. But let's try the x axis. Rolling over like that. Speed it up. Look at that. That's the intermediate axis. So if the moon was rolling over like that in that direction, then we'd be witnessing the Jenny Peckoff effect every few days. <laughs> Maybe every every year or so, perhaps. Okay, so let's look at that from the perspective of the Earth using the new EGM 2008. This is the EGM 2008. It's much better than the EGM 96 that I've used in previous videos. And let's have a look at it spinning. I'm going to spin it on its Y axis according to my model. And we will find that it is actually stable. The EGM 2008 is much, a much better model. So I'm going to speed that right up and show you that this is actually stable. It's actually never going to flip because it's already spinning on either its major or minor principal axis. All right, let's try a different axis this time. X. Let's speed it up. Let's see whether the X axis is a minor or major principal axis 
dann mal Modo. It does seem pretty stable to me, actually. Yes, yeah, stable. So the Earth could actually spin like that, and it would be stable. It wouldn't flip like the Jenny Beckhoff effect. Okay, so now I'm going to rotate it on its Z axis according to my model, and then leave it running and see on which axis its major or minor principal axis it stabilizes. It's starting to lose stability now. If we look at the yellow pole hode there, it's no longer centering completely horizontal or vertical. So I've been watching that for half an hour now, and I still can't tell you which principal axis that's going to finish on. I can say now that it has crossed the separatrix. If I was to look at the red pole hode here, it's always visible. Alright, so I think it's safe to say now that it has stabilized on 
what you would call its major principal axis. Which also suggests that the EGM 2008 gravitational model is actually pretty good. And that the Earth is subject to the Jani Bekov effect. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe and share.